Hi, I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. And this is Rediscover, a conversation where we travel through everything that makes up the essence of who we are and how to live authentically and imaginatively. Here, we invite you to join us as we explore and discuss a little bit of, well, everything. From Disney to cultivating your most authentic life to deepening your relationships and talking about the real stuff. We hope you'll find this a space that speaks to you, encourages you, and brings a little bit of magic into your day. Hi everyone, I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. And welcome back to this week's episode of Rediscover. This week we have a very special guest with us, Amy Westmoreland. She is a manifesting expert and coach and she is here to give us all the incredible manifesting insight. I know we talk a lot about manifesting on our podcast, but I really wanted to get someone on here who is really well-versed in the topic to give a little bit more background and context and debunk some myths and give you guys more information. So Amy has been my manifesting coach. Actually, she still is. And um, (laughs) I'm really excited to introduce her to all of you. Hi, Amy. (laughs) Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm very honored and happy to be here today. We are so honored to have you. (laughs) So every month of 2021, we are having a different theme for each month. And in January, we focused on physical wellness. In February, we talked a lot about love and relationships. So March is going to be all about spring cleaning in all areas of life, whether it's simplifying your space that you live in or simplifying your thought patterns and everything. And we couldn't think of a better person to have kick off that series than Amy. So I'm super excited because I'm really new to this idea. I feel like Jess was the first person to introduce me to it. So We're really excited to kind of dive in. Yay. So for those who have never heard of manifesting before, can you, Amy, give us a general overview of what it is and how people implement it into their lives? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Manifesting has been around forever. All the major religions talk about it uh, to some degree or another. Science kind of backs it up. And it is the idea that you can deliberately focus your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs. There's different styles and uh, select what you would like to experience. And then it will actually show up sort of like magic in your physical reality in ways that you sometimes cannot comprehend. So you can get into the practice of it, the habit of it. There's so many different styles out there and you can start doing it deliberately and actually experiencing things that you did not really believe were possible at first or you only dreamed were possible. And the way to, to really implement it is give it a shot, like give it a try. You have nothing to lose if it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. That's so true. So could you tell us a little bit about how you first got into manifesting and what your journey has been with it? And do you have any notable manifestations that you're really proud of? Yeah. So my parents kind of knew about manifesting it. The law of attraction was not a term that was around when I was a kid or it wasn't readily available. Um, My parents had learned about it through like a business practice. And so they kind of only applied it to business type things. They didn't realize you could apply it to everything. And so there was some, uh, some of these beliefs and ideas already in my household when I was growing up. And I am a very curious person and I decided to explore it on my own. And so I got some books and basically studied it and practice was able to see what would happen. And I've been able to manifest bigger and bigger things, bigger transformations in my life as I've gotten better at it. So definitely for anyone who is a beginner, like give yourself some time. It's like any other skill set. But some of my not maybe more significant manifestations, but ones that I thought were pretty interesting because they taught me something about manifesting. I have um, three that I picked out that I wanted to mention. The first one I don't know if you know what the Nielsen family as the Nielsen TV ratings. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. What is that? Yeah. So when I was like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old, I saw this documentary on television and I'm older than you guys. So it was like before the internet existed. <laughs> and um, I saw this documentary about the Nielsen ratings and it is kind of an independent company that randomly selects households in America 
And if you're randomly selected and you agree to it, your habits of watching TV would actually go back to them and it would determine which television shows stayed on the air. So when they're talking about like ratings on TV, it used to be the Nielsen ratings. Oh. So it's like a portion, a percentage of the population is represented randomly. So I really, really wanted that to be a Nielsen family is what they called it when I was a kid. And I forgot about it, of course. And as I got older and I started manifesting, um, I think I was in my like early 30s. I, I remembered that and I thought, gosh, I should manifest that because there's no way to like apply for it. You have to be randomly selected. Okay. And so I imagined like I'm in the Nielsen family, like I'm a Nielsen family person. And I am not kidding. Three weeks later, I got the letter in the mail that my household had been selected. Oh my god, That's gosh. so cool. And it's like the smallest thing in the world. But to me, I was like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was like, wow, okay, that's pretty incredible. Uh, because there was nothing I could do to make it happen other than to manifest it. <laughs> so that was that was interesting. Um, I also manifested, which took, I think, six to eight weeks, give or take, uh, meeting Oprah, which was very wow. significant for me. We were just talking about her and how amazing she is. She's definitely amazing. Oh, I cool. um, was listening to a, a video of another manifester who had manifested meeting Oprah. And I was like, oh, you know what? I should manifest meeting Oprah. That's a good idea. And I ran through, I was driving from Atlanta to Nashville in my car. So I had some time to think. And I was like, how could that happen? I'm like, well, oddly enough, I used to live in Chicago and I got asked to go to the Oprah show when it was on many times. And I always said no. So I'm like, well, whoops. Um, <laughs> so I just put it out there. I'm like, I would love to meet her. I don't care when it happens. And I think it was six weeks later, a friend of mine emailed me or called me and was like, hey, do you want to meet Oprah? Oh my gosh. And I was like, do I, what? and I, I told nobody like, and I'm not like someone who talks about Oprah. So like none of my friends were like thinking right. I'm like a big fan or anything. I'm like, yes. Why can we meet her? And he was like, absolutely. And he's like, I just got this invite. You can come with me to this event. And then it was another couple of weeks. I went to the event and there was Oprah That's and I got a photo with her. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. He yeah. is like, it, I feel like it's like God, Oprah. Like, <laughs> she's yeah. like the coolest human you could ever meet. Aww. It was, it was incredible. I couldn't believe how fast it was. But one of the yeah. fun things about that was I didn't care how long it took. So I think that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. that it happened more quickly. Oh yeah. You've yes. told me that before. Like if you yeah. don't want it to happen fast, it usually does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's probably the hardest, or at least for me and, and get, again, this is my rudimentary knowledge of this whole concept, but we were talking earlier about how like my biggest thing, and I think for a lot of people is this like struggle with relinquishing control. And a lot of that has to do with time because as much as people experience like money scarcity, time scarcity is very real too. So I think for mm -hmm. me, the idea of like relinquishing not only control over the situation and the outcome, but control over the timeline of that is so hard to get over. I completely agree. And I was just thinking about this earlier. I was trying to answer a question of you or had asked me, you know, and they're like, how do I deal with expectation? And expectation includes time. Like we think we know better about when it should happen. Well, it should happen tomorrow. It should happen yesterday. It should happen on my time. Mm -hmm. And it is difficult to sometimes step back and be like, the time of when it happens is actually part of the orchestration and being able to find a way to let go and just let it happen when it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I have actually found if I'm like, Oh, I don't care if it takes 10 years, it happens tomorrow. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. And then I had one other one I wanted to mention that I thought was really interesting. I had been years and years ago manifesting. I wanted to know I could manifest a lump sum of money and I picked a thousand dollars and I did not care how it came to me. It just had to come in a positive way. And I did some focusing and this one took a little bit of time. It took a few months. I wasn't very confident in it, to be honest. And then I went on a girl's weekend and we ended up at a casino, me and my friend. And um, we went to eat dinner before we went around. And I, you know, I'm not like telling anybody to go gamble because that wasn't what I was doing, but we were just having fun and we were having dinner. And I was like, you know, I'd really like to win a thousand dollars on a slot machine. And I didn't need it. I didn't care. Right. It was just like a girl's weekend. And so we leave dinner. We go into the casino floor. 
we walk around. I see one slot machine stands out to me for some reason. I had $20. I put the $20 bill in it. And on the fifth spin, I hit the jackpot. And I didn't know how much the jackpot was. It's like the bells went off. Yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. like, oh my God, did I win like a million dollars? Like what just happened? And, and it was a thousand dollar jackpot. And I st- sat there, the little attendant came over, dropped 10, $100 bills into my hand. And I was like, oh my God, like I, that's what I manifested. I just, <laughs> like, she just handed me a thousand dollars. Someone just cash. walked up to you and handed you a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. So the orchestration for that was girls weekend slot machine. Like there was right. like a flow to it. Yeah. Um, but that was really cool because again, it was mind boggling how everything was really easy and it just mm-hmm. happened. Yeah. So there are just a few examples of some things yeah. you can manifest. Thank you for sharing those, Amy. That's, yeah, of course. That's mind blowing. That's incredible. <laughs> that, oh my god, the magic is really prominent. Like I think the magic is in the orchestration yeah. and looking back on it, you're like, wow, things lined up so incredibly. Yes, it's yeah. like the coolest feeling. So I have a little bit of an idea just from what you've said already, but I I'm sure you've gotten this before, and if you haven't here we go. (laughs) From the perspective of someone like myself, like I believe in God as my higher power. So sort of like Mm -hmm. the orchestrator of my life. So if I were up for a job, instead of kind of sitting there and going like, oh, I really want this job, I would probably pray about it. Like, God, I really want this job. I feel like this is really like aligned with your plan for me. But if it's not like, go ahead and close the door. But if it is like, I really, really like this door to be opened for me. And from a very like simple, like I identify as kind of a non-denominational Christian. So there's no like doctrine or like saint that I'm praying to. It's really just like, like you have a plan for my life. If this is with the plan, let's do it. If it's not with the plan, take me somewhere else. So it's sort of a simple concept, but I guess from that perspective, like how does manifesting relate to that or does it relate at all? And can you kind of clear up the difference between manifesting and prayer other than the obvious one that like God is involved? (laughs) Absolutely. So I, you know, of the religions I'm familiar with, most of them have a foundation that includes the idea of manifesting. This is called something else. Yeah. Um, it's called faith and it's believing in the power, the higher power. And, you know, people have figured this out for thousands of years. They figured out, oh, if I think this way and I believe, or if I have faith, or if I trust, or if I ask in a certain way, like things will show up. Mm-hmm. And they've tried to explain it. And, I think the way that I would describe it is there is a power and that power is beyond our conscious comprehension. So like when the orchestration happens, like when I saw that slot machine and I had a feeling, well, where did that come from? Right. You know, why, why was it that one that stood out to me? And some people would say it's energy. Some people would say it's your consciousness. Some people would say it's God. I mean, these are all different words to describe a force, a power that actually exists that is beyond something we can really comprehend. Mm -hmm. And I also believe in uh, God. And I believe that the way that we manifest is in harmony with that power. So I love the Christian faith because it teaches a lot about manifesting in it, you know, how to do it, like speak to your mountain and have faith. And, you know, you only need faith the size of a mustard seed. I mean, there's like some gold in the Bible Yeah, when it comes to this stuff. (laughs) Yes. But I also have this idea that we are designed to manifest naturally. We're naturally able to do it. So it's something that is like a God-given gift and we all have the ability to do it, but it, it works in harmony with that power and some people don't like the idea of it being God. Some people don't like the idea of there being an outside power. And so they they can still manifest. They can have that from the scientific perspective, from the, you know, the consciousness perspective. To me, it's all exactly the same thing. Yeah. But it is easier for a lot of people to manifest by praying to the power. Prayer mm-hmm. is a form of manifestation yeah. because it's like the faith is in something bigger than themselves. So, I mean, I think religion, the religious ideas of manifesting is, is fantastic. I find a lot of value in that. Mm-hmm. And 
I can teach it in every different way there is possible. Cause to me, it's like a natural ability we all have, which I think is a God given gift. So I don't know if that answers your question, but <laughs> it absolutely does. It absolutely does. It was yeah. actually, I really wanted to ask you that because I think there's a lot of misconceptions surrounding that. And there are a lot of people who are kind of going to float like more severely on one or mm -hmm. the other side and kind of almost pit the two against each other. So I loved when you said prayer is just a form of manifesting that makes so much more sense to me yeah. than someone saying like, well, manifesting like takes God out of the equation because I always view God as like an, a force of energy. Like I really feel like wind, anything like that, that I can feel it's just another force of energy, but like God, yeah. like moving in my life, it's, it's a similar thing. So what is it they say? Um, Cause I, you know, I'm, I'm spiritual. I'm not, you know, I'm not overly religious or anything, yeah. but um, <laughs> Same. it's like, what is it? I think it's in the Bible or in the Christian faith where it says something like you see God in his works, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like that's how, you know, like that's the orchestration. Like that's yeah. well, where did all that come from? It didn't right. just come from yeah. nowhere. Like there's something else there. And I think some people think it's like, oh, it's my subconscious mind. Some people think, oh, it's my conscious mind. So it, to me, it's like, it doesn't really matter what it is. Right. It's incredibly powerful. And it seems to be benevolent, right? <laughs> yeah. Like let's focus on the relevant details. <laughs> yeah, let's focus on what's important and yeah. that you can ask it for help and it will help you. Yeah. 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 Definitely. We, we always say like God is for you, like yes. on your side, cultivating hope and a future for you. Those are all like paraphrases of biblical quotes, but that's kind of how I view it. So I guess yeah, it's similar for and manifesting. I want to point out too, I think a lot of people who leave God out of the equation, mm -hmm. um, they can still manifest, but there is a benefit to believing in the power of God because it is that faith, like there is something bigger than me that can do this. So you don't yeah. feel that pressure all on yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's even as someone who can sit here and be like, oh yeah, I believe in God. I believe he's orchestrating my life. I, I mean, like I said, have trouble relinquishing control and that's almost like blasphemous on my part. Cause I'm like, well, I believe that God is in control, but I also don't want to give him control. <laughs> so I think that's where manifesting could be helpful for someone like me or someone who has anxiety surrounding like relinquishing control or relinquishing the outcome to yeah. a higher power or a higher energy because then it's like, it's out of my hands. Yep. I can, <laughs> I can talk about what I want and I can look to it and take steps toward it or whatever, but that's all I can do. Yeah. And, and everyone has their own um, way of detaching or letting go or surrendering. Some people, you know, do it the way that you just described. Some people trust themselves. Some people trust the mechanism. Um, there's lots of different ways, but what you're also talking about, like giving up control. Hey, just so you know, every human being struggles with that. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. This is why I, I love struggle. Amy because she makes yeah. me feel like I'm not alone. Yeah, I <laughs> struggle with that. I'm like, I know this works. Let me hold on to it really tight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I think that's why I lean so into manifesting. I talk about it on our podcast all the time, mm -hmm. but it's finally the thing that helped me shift out of that holding on so tight with my anxiety thing. It's helped me detach and my life flows a lot better now. So I'm yeah. so thankful I found it and we crossed paths. So yeah. And you are a really, really good manifester. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So That's a little awesome. background, I forgot to mention this earlier, but I actually found Amy's YouTube channel in 2017, just by total serendipitous moments. Um, and I started watching some videos and learned your techniques. And I was so drawn to everything that Amy was talking about and your work and, um, saw you were taking coaching clients. So I signed up and I haven't looked back since, and it was <laughs> kind of the best thing I ever did. And I talked about this a lot in our social media episode, episode four, we'll link mm -hmm. that in the show notes, but yeah, thank you, Amy. You're, no, you're welcome. You're You've done a great job. Thank you. Your work is so transformative and I'm just so much happier in my life now. And I have a lot more fun. So that's, <laughs> that's a big benefit. So we're going to continue on to the next question. This is another like manifestation debunk question. Could you unpack the stigma surrounding manifestation as an inherently selfish practice? Yes. And I, I'm looking forward to answering this question. <laughs> okay. So 
a couple ways of describing it. You know how when you're totally drained and empty and you have nothing to give and then someone like asks you for something and, and then you still want to give it anyway mm-hmm. and it does yeah. like nothing for either one of you. When you focus on fulfilling your own dreams, fulfilling your own happiness through manifestation or goal setting or anything really, you are filling up your own cup first so that you have more to give others. So when I manifest, if I'm asking for money or if I'm asking for um, opportunity, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, the more money I have, the more people I can help. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. The more opportunity I have, the more people I can reach. So it's not like it's selfless because I get something out of it as well, but it's more like turning it around and thinking like, I'm only doing this to get something for me. It's no, the happier I am, the more people's lives I can touch, the happier I am, the more kindness I can give. Cause when we're not happy, we're not as, you know, yeah. you guys, you know, I'm talking about, we're not as like pleasant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the way that I want to describe it is when you're on an airplane, And they're going through the safety instructions at the beginning. They always say, you know, in case of an emergency, if oxygen pressure happens or depressurization happens, a mask will drop in the overhead from the overhead compartment. And what do they say? They say, put yours on first Mm -hmm. and then help the person next to you. They don't say sacrifice yourself and help and like, you know, um, help the other person first because they know the fully functioning adult who can do that, if they can get their oxygen on, then they are capable of helping people who might need help, children, someone who's maybe in need of it, versus that sacrifice of, let me help you at my own expense. So for me, it's like, that's not selfish. I mean, no one thinks like, oh, putting my mask on first is selfish. Yeah. You know, from the overhead bent. So it's the same kind of idea. It's smart. Yeah. Yeah. So it's smart to fill up your own cup. Do you think that your intention has anything to do with like the effectiveness of your manifestation? Like Mm -hmm. if I'm saying I want to manifest a thousand dollars because I want to be rich so I can buy myself this thing that I want versus like, I want to manifest a thousand dollars so I can, you know, buy really nice Christmas presents for my family or whatever it is. Do you think that like the intention being selfless has something to do with the outcome? I've noticed, uh, cause I've actually practiced this, that the more willing I am before something manifests to share it, mm-hmm. it typically happens easier and faster. Like if that's part of the intention, but I've manifested things that are just for me too, that yeah. happen yeah. just as fine. I think where it kind of goes a little weird is when we're manifesting something with a bad intention mm-hmm. or to take something from someone. So it should never be from that point of view, because that, that would be like misusing the, the, the power. As long as you know that, you know, taking time for yourself to rest, taking time for yourself to do self-care, self-love, even if like somebody needs you, if you're doing that, it's just maximizing your ability to help them later it becomes really easy. But if you're doing it at someone else's expense, like anything else in life, then yeah, maybe that's not so great. Mm -hmm. But then that would be more of the individual's intentions are selfish versus the actual process of manifesting is. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Can manifesting be an interpersonal practice? As in, can like I sit here with Jess and Mm -hmm. manifest something collectively with her? Or is it kind of a more individual thing? And then can I manifest something myself for another person? Yeah, this is a little more advanced. So <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of a zero to 60 person. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So um, I think of it from the scientific perspective, it's the observer effect. Okay. Um, and they've done like the double slit experiment, which you can Google and look up, um, which has been done, proves this, that whoever the observer is determines what happens. So the answer is you can, if you are the observer manifest for everybody or with someone else, but as the observer, no one else has the ability to manifest for you unless you observe that you have given them that ability. Okay. So like authorization. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. So, and I've, I've manifested plenty of things with people mm-hmm. where we do it jointly. It's like fun. I've also had people, I allow people to manifest 
things for me, but that's something that I allow in my life. That's a lot of fun. And if anyone wants to know like why I do that, because some people have asked me like, why would you let that happen? Because it's it's nice to see what people want to do. It's exciting. It's fun. It's surprising. It's sort of boring if you're the one calling all the shots all the time yeah. <laughs> from that perspective. Yeah. So, but yes. And there are some styles that teach co-creation. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I have... I have determined based on lots of years of experience, almost three decades now that it is really the observer, whoever the observer is that has the ultimate last say. How do you let someone manifest something for you? So it's still you doing it. Okay. But uh, so like, if you're the observer, you're the manifester, you would be like, I want to have the experience of what it would be like if someone wanted something and I was their manifestation. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But that's still your thing. You're just kind of let it, leaving it open to what it is. Right. This is, a, it's a little more advanced because it's yes. like sometimes people's like minds are like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but it, quantum entanglement explains this really well. So, you, you know, in quantum entanglement, you have two particles, you introduce them and then you separate them. And they, when they set an intention for one particle, which will automatically change the other one, they have shown that before they even do the thing to the first particle, the other particle starts doing it. The intention changes both of them, even though they're going for like the first particle, the second particle starts to react. So if they try to spin it to the right and they are like, we're going to spin particle A to the right before they actually start to spin it, particle B starts spinning Hmm. to the right. So what can happen is when you give someone or give yourself the experience of letting someone else manifest in your experience, it's not really them manifesting in your experience. It's basically you're entangled with them. Mm -hmm. And it appears like they do it first because of the way that quantum entanglement works. (laughs) It's kind of hard. Yeah. It's kind of hard. It makes sense. I'm, I'm like picturing like yeah. a diagram in my brain yeah right. it makes sense manifesting is very scientific yeah so. <laughs> but that's kind of where the authenticity comes like this is applicable and like the scientific method has been applied to this concept so you can yeah. have very real like theories and I, I think yeah it, this is amazing yeah. <laughs> this it is is so cool. it, it's amazing and then there's and there then there's the element of like but what makes it all go Right. Yeah. And that's the power. And that's the power of faith or the power of God or the power of whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that's the one thing the scientific you know, community hasn't, uh, as far as I know, figured out like, yeah, but what makes it all right hmm. in motion in the first place? I love it. It's so cool. Very cool. So oh. now we're going to bring yes. it down to basics a little bit now that we got everyone's wheels turning. Yes. We wanted to confront some common misconceptions. So now we're going to ask you more about actually how to manifest. So we were wondering, what are some specific techniques that someone who is new to manifesting can start exploring? Yeah. Um, you know what I would say for someone who's really brand new to it, start with gratitude. Mm. Okay. Uh, be thankful for what you have. Yeah. Uh, be specific and then you'll get more of that thing. And that's something that's quantifiable. So, but write it down. Cause we tend to forget. Mm. Uh, so if you write it down, you're like, I'm grateful for like, um, the money that I have, you'll notice you'll get a little bit more money. So that's, that's the easiest way to get really into it as a beginner. My four steps mimics the natural way that we manifest, which is we have a thought, we focus on what we want. We focus on having it. We usually imagine experiencing it somehow in our minds, either visualization or a thought process. And then our mind sort of in the natural process has a little conversation around it. So for instance, if you're like going to go to the grocery store, you're like, oh, I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to buy bread. Suddenly you imagine yourself in your car or you imagine yourself in the aisle of the store buying bread, right? They give a natural image. Then you have a conversation and that conversation is, oh, should I do it now? Should I do it later? Oh, what if the line is too long? Oh, maybe I drive enough money in my account. And you have all this like stuff that goes on in your head. Mm -hmm. And then you come to a conclusion. Oh yes, I'll go to the store. So manifesting is very similar. You focus on what you want. That would be the car that you want, the relationship that you want, the money that you want. You focus on having it. You generate deliberately thoughts, feelings, uh, visualizations that match it. Now, that's that's the easy part, to be honest. Then when you come out of that, then your mind is like, ah, that's not going to happen. What? I, 
well, I don't know how to get that car. I don't know how to get that yeah. money. And because it's not like going to buy a loaf of bread. It's not something that's in your immediate control. Right. So that's where my other three steps um, come in to help navigate that crisis of the mind, basically, after you've determined you want something. And the second step is you believe it's possible. It can happen rather than trying to convince yourself that it will happen, especially something you don't know that will happen. You can't sit there and be like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Your mind's like, no, we don't. You're like, (laughs) so, you know, it's double checking that you believe it is possible. That's the, where God comes in. All things are possible with God. Mm -hmm. All things are possible through faith. And then my third step is releasing resistance, which resistance is basically anything that comes up that you have concluded is a limitation that says you can't have what you want. And it could be a thought, a feeling, a circumstance, could be anything. And finding a way to just be like, no, nothing's, nothing changes the possibility that I can still get it. Mm. It's still possible. And then my fourth step is to detach and detaching is what you're talking about. Like with surrender earlier, it's a little bit harder for a lot of people. Mm. So it's the thing that I have to practice the most, to be honest. And that is kind of being able to move forward with your life without the need for the thing that you want to have happen, but still wanting it and, or still feeling good about it. And it's a delicate balance. Um, some people put that off into trust. Like I trust that it will happen. Other people are like, I'm fine without it. There's lots of different ways to do that. But again, these are ways to navigate the mind because we have these little conversations about everything and we come to conclusions and ultimately in manifesting, you're trying to come to the conclusion that, yeah, this can happen for me. You're, you're trying to avoid coming to the conclusion. There's no way this can happen for me. Wow. Yes. Yeah. The surrendering, like the releasing and the detaching probably I imagine are the most difficult for most people. Yeah. At least at first I know like with practice, she's over here just like, everything's going to happen and it's perfect time. And I'm like, Jess, you don't understand. <laughs> and she's well, like, no, I do. And I'm like, I know that she does. Cause I've known her for half my life, but I look at, <laughs> look who my coach is. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just like, when you're in that space and everything feels like it's spiraling out of control, you like hold on to whatever Mm -hmm. scrap of control you feel like you have left. And I've noticed, and I can actually logically see like in the times in my life where I have released control and I've just been like, this is just what it is right now. Like I want this thing, but it'll happen when it's going to happen. It happens. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. (laughs) But manifesting, (laughs) but it's, I'm not conscious that that's going on. I think there are certain things that are different in levels of kind of importance or desire for some people. So, yeah. And I want to point out for you, we all have different wording. That wording you just used is a natural way for you to detach. So you can replicate that on command whenever you want now. So you can deliberately say that because you have a belief system around it, which she was saying for her about letting go the way that she says it, like yeah. it'll happen when, what did you say? It's going to happen when it's going to happen or something. Yeah. It's just going to happen whenever it happens. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's like your own wording is great. Some, someone mm-hmm. else might try to repeat that wording and it wouldn't work for them because mm-hmm. it doesn't feel right to them. Like for me, I have a video where I talk about like, I trust I'll be okay no matter what. Like that's one of mine. Mm-hmm. When I know I can say that and mean it, I know mm-hmm. that I've detached. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. It's like a little toolbox. Yeah. Detaching is really cool. You feel it. Is. You feel it. Yeah. You My dad it. always says, and he has had a rough life, but he'll always say like he was on his second tour in Afghanistan and we would like have 20 minutes to Skype with him once a year. (laughs) He would be like, you know, everything just has a funny way of working out. And he said it. And, and I would always just be like, what, do you really believe that? Like, how, how do you really believe that? And, and he really did. And like all the time, no matter if he's in a good season of life or not, he's like, everything just has a funny way of working out. And I think that's Mm -hmm. probably his, release phrase it's a conclusion so in in manifesting you're actually coming to a conclusion about the thing like with the bread like so in conclusion i can go buy the bread yeah yeah or in conclusion no i can't go buy the 50 million dollar house today i don't have the money right yeah so it's like he had it's like a belief that he comes to the conclusion with um everything has a funny way of working out and and he has enough evidence that that's true for him yeah that's- and like, um, this too shall pass is a great one. Mm-hmm. If you're like upset, you know, it's a yeah. great, 
yeah. this too shall pass because it does. Yeah. 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 It's my mom will just be like, it's just for now. Yeah. It's just a season. Yeah. So there's so many there's ways. So many. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, it's the big one. My first introduction to you when Jess and I were doing the episode where we were talking about like social media accounts to follow in an intentional way. She was talking about you and talking about how you taught your audience to manifest a rainbow. And I was like, that's the cutest thing ever. And we love just the greater implications of that concept. But can you explain, I guess, for the people who aren't familiar, how manifesting something like a rainbow is kind of an empowering indication that we all have the ability to manifest more deliberately in our lives. And that, you know, something like a rainbow that seems... Yeah. So out of our control is actually within our reach. Yes. So I really wanted something I could to offer people that everybody would be interested in. The rainbow itself became a symbol that manifested for me. I don't know a single person who doesn't like a rainbow. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Even like the toughest guys in the world are like, yeah, I, yeah, I like rainbows. Um, <laughs> like, oh, look, it's so cool. There's a rainbow. <laughs> I ended up manifesting one on purpose. I practiced with all sorts of different things. So I was doing um, practice for a rainbow. And when I saw it in the sky, I thought, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. This is so simple because I could not have made, like gotten a ladder big enough and gone up there and painted it. There's no <laughs> way you can make a rainbow right. in the sky. Right. You can make one with your garden hose. You can make one in, you know, like bubbles in your house. You cannot make the big ones in the sky. Yeah. And so I thought, well, this is the perfect thing because it's a wonderful symbol. All sorts of people love rainbows. They're a symbol of hope. They're a symbol of God's promise. They're a symbol of so many positive things. They're beautiful. And you can see one literally anywhere on the planet as long as there's sky available. So I thought, oh, this is perfect. Ah, so <laughs> I decided to teach people how to manifest rainbows. And also the other thing I love about rainbows is they're safe. So your subconscious will hold back from manifesting something if you deem it unsafe. Your subconscious or most people's subconscious do not deem rainbows as unsafe. Right, right. right. So <laughs> you're, yeah, so you all, there's also that bonus of like, it's unlikely that someone's subconscious is gonna be like, oh no, bad rainbows. Um, so it just became like the perfect symbol. And um, I took a, a little bit of time to really think about how I wanted to teach it because I wanted it to be taught in a way that children could understand it and do it. Right. And yeah, and then people have had some great success with it. That's amazing. I love that. Could I, you explain like the quick way of how you told people? Yeah. So you just close your eyes. Yeah. You imagine how, whatever it looks like in your head. It doesn't worry. Don't worry about how the visualization looks. Just imagine that you are looking at a rainbow in the sky yeah. and then you actually smile with your physical mouth um, because when we're smiling, it sort of like boosts our energy, it boosts our mood. And you just hold that for like 10, 15, 20 seconds. You open your eyes and then you just quickly tell yourself, yeah, of course I can see a rainbow. They live in the sky. I see sky. <laughs> so you check, you believe it's possible. Then you release resistance, which is, it doesn't matter what I think. There's nothing that can limit me from seeing a rainbow or there's nothing like stop rainbows from being made in the sky because they're a natural phenomenon. And then you move on to detachment, which is, you know, I really want to see a rainbow, but I do not need to see a rainbow because nobody needs to see one. That's true. It's not a real need. So that's the process. And then back to the greater implication, mm -hmm. the greater implication is I imagined it in my mind and then I saw it in the sky and I know there's no way there's no connection that is artificial between those two things. It's, it's a natural process. So that internal visualization and then seeing one, especially if it's shortly after visualizing it, that's what's so powerful for people to know, like, I saw that in my mind and then I saw it in the sky. That's why it has a lot of impact on people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's interesting. You said people don't manifest things that, that feel unsafe to them. Mm -hmm. Like, even if it's something that subconsciously you might think is for your greater good or your higher good, you're afraid to manifest it because it means like experiencing a big shift in your life or a change or a move or maybe letting go of someone that you care about or whatever that may be. Whereas like a rainbow is a really safe thing and it's a happy thing. And no one's, like you said, no one's mad about seeing a rainbow, <laughs> but maybe something that 
you know, your gut is telling you like, this might actually be good for us, but you're afraid to kind of move forward with even thoughts about like, like you said, imagining what that would be like, because Mm -hmm. it also means like big change and people hate change. Yeah. And, and so if you have subconscious fear, cause we all do on some mm-hmm. level about something or other, um, then you just use your conscious mind to release that fear. This is safe, making this change in my career, this change in my relationship, this change in my money, this is safe, this is safe. Um, so you can actually deliberately shift that as well. But yeah, if the subconscious deems something as dangerous or unsafe, it tries to prevent you, um, which a lot of people struggle against, especially when they're trying to manifest a lot of money. Mm. If their subconscious has programming in it that says, you know, it's not safe to have a lot of money, someone will rob you. Then you could be not understanding why it's not showing up. Um, and then you would be like, no, it is safe to have a lot of money. I can have a security system. And then that would like flip it in your sub, your subconscious just needs instructions Mm. of why this is safe, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a really good connection because I feel like it took me a second to get that one. And <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's very powerful. My brain, like, yeah, like, well, did that. <laughs> For awesome. Sure. Amy's Instagram story is always full of manifested rainbows. <laughs> so great. Yeah. yeah. Like, did you have any idea that now your social media was just going to be covered in rainbows? <laughs> no. I mean, I thought like, oh, there'll be some rainbows, but I didn't realize it was going to take over my life. Like, they've, you know, taken over my life. Okay. And it's great because, I mean, I'm still like every rainbow. I'm like, oh my God, it's a rainbow. Oh. Like I have a rainbow before. <laughs> yeah, it's part of your brand. I yeah. love it. We'll definitely link that one in the show notes so you guys can watch Amy's video. It's, well, it's a really cute one. Have you seen, what is it, uh, Thor Ragnarok when yes. Kate yeah. Blanchett is like the goddess of um, death or whatever? She's like, mm-hmm. I am the goddess of death, right? And I'm like, yeah. I am the goddess of rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> that is you. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That's so cute. That sounds like an epic Halloween costume just waiting yeah. to happen. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we glazed over this one before, but I wanted to have a whole question dedicated to it. Can you dive in a little bit more about the concept of resistance and any techniques you could share that we could use to release it? So acceptance is the biggest technique to release any resistance. So resistance itself, it's a conclusion, um, an idea, a thought feeling a circumstance that you personally have decided means you can't have what you want or greatly reduces the chance. And it feels bad when you think about it because it's like, oh, I can't have what I want. So most people try to solve it and you can solve resistance. I'm good at it. It's something that you can do or you can loophole it and just be like, you know what? Of course I think this, of course I see limitations, but it can still happen anyway. So accept it. I accept that I have this limiting idea, this limiting thought. I accept the circumstance looks like it can't turn around, but it can still happen anyway because all things are possible. So it must be possible even in these circumstances, even with these thoughts, even when I'm, you know, laying on the floor crying. It's again, telling your subconscious, your subconscious is really powerful in this, um, this aspect it's telling it like this can still happen. So it's free to happen versus telling it like, no, it can't happen or telling the universe it can't happen. No, it can't happen. Let me tell you why. And it's the instruction your conscious mind gives to the subconscious or the universe that ultimately determines what you will allow yourself to receive because it can give it to you. It's, but it's waiting to give it to you. Yeah. Until you're like ready to receive it. Yeah. 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 Wow. The loophole is so helpful because Isn't sometimes <laughs> yes, I use it all the time. Sometimes, you know, you just can't get there with you can't other techniques in the loophole. You're just like, all right, of course I feel this way. It still could happen. It's just like yeah. so freeing. So yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that kind of idea that like, no matter what blockades you see or, you know, what negativity you're allowing or if you have this cynical view that like, oh, it can't happen or it won't happen. Like if it's going to happen, it's going to happen whether you imagine these <laughs> blockages yeah. to be in place or not. Exactly. And so faith in God in the religious sense is like basically saying, I'm not going to conclude that this can't happen because I believe in this, you know, almighty God or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I believe in the love and the faith of God. Yeah. And then, and then in manifesting, it's the same idea. Like, you know, yeah, I see all these limitations. I see how it seems really difficult or impossible or unlikely, 
but I'm still going to conclude that it's possible. Like, who am I to say it's not possible? So acceptance and the loophole. Nope. It still happened anyway. Yeah. It's funny. Cause when I, when I kind of try to explain to people, like, for example, my brother is an atheist and it's so interesting because we're just all over the board in, in my family. And, and he's come to my church with me a couple of times and he's not like opposed to it, but it's a very casual thing. I'm just like, come with me if you want, don't, if you don't, whatever. But we do sometimes talk about like the concept of God and, and, and the concept of faith in general. Cause I think he's so scientific and, and linear that he can't possibly like conceive a power he can't see that's not tangible to him. And I l- use the analogy of like, have you ever had ice on your windshield? Oh, I it's grew up morning. in Chicago, girl. I've, yeah, okay. I've had, yeah. I've had, <laughs> so I've, had, I've had five feet of snow on my windshield. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're, we're in Buffalo. Same okay. thing. But I always talk about it. Like when you're running late to go somewhere and you don't have time to defrost your entire windshield, so yes. you just like defrost that little bit in front of the driver's seat and you just kind of start driving and you're like, okay, I can see what's right in front of me, but I can't see the whole big picture yet because it hasn't been revealed to me yet. But like, I have faith that it's there. I know that it's there. I just, enough time hasn't gone by yet, you know? So I kind of describe it in that way. And it's like, this is the exact same thing. I like to teach it as like, when I coach, I work with the person's individual belief system. Mm -hmm. So like with you, if if I were ended up coaching you, I would be like, let's talk about it from that religious sense. But for other people, I talk about in different ways. What's interesting, it doesn't matter what you believe. It just works. Yeah. And that's, that's what's really cool about it. Yeah. It makes it feel so personal too, because it's able to be adapted to your own beliefs, which is amazing. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, we spent the last month for February on our podcast, talking all about love and relationships. What is your outlook regarding manifesting a certain type of a relationship or a specific person? Yeah, they both work. There's, in my opinion, no difference to manifesting a relationship or a specific person than a rainbow. It just might take you a little bit more time to convince yourself that, you know, you can have what you want or stop convincing yourself is a better way of saying it, that you can't have what you want. Mm -hmm. So one of the funniest things is when I was a kid, you know, we didn't have the internet and all that kind of stuff. So I learned how to manifest from books. I didn't have a community to talk to. It was kind of on my own. And my first real big manifestation when I was 16 was I manifested my ex-boyfriend back. I didn't have anyone telling me you couldn't do it. I just, you know, I was like, oh, it says you can manifest anything. (laughs) (laughs) So you love that that childlike just spirit. I love it. (laughs) And I'm 16 and I had basically no idea what I was doing, but I just followed what the book said and or a couple books I was looking at and it finally worked. And um, it was great. It was, it was miraculous actually. And so then as I got older and I found a community of manifestors and people would be like, you can't manifest a specific person. I'd be like, wait, are you sure? Cause I literally did that. Like, that's the first thing. I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am the walking evidence. Yeah. Like why I, it was, I was super confused that people had determined that they've concluded that that's not possible. Yeah. Uh, but the thing about it is with both love and a specific person, you have to come at it from the opposite of what most people do come at it from. It has to come at it from the position of loving the relationship, loving the other person from a loving place, loving yourself. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, when people are trying to get some like a specific person or a relationship, they're coming from the get, like, how do I get this? How do I get them to love me? How do I get the relationship? And like, we all go through that. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's the flip that you take. And it's, what do I have to give to this relationship? What resources do I already have? Why do you want it is the big thing. So manifesting a relationship in general or a specific person is why do you want it? And if you can tap into the loving reasons of why you want it and focus on those, it's extremely easy, actually. Um, And that was the flip I took with him was I went from trying to get him back to actually being like, you know what? I just think he's a great guy. And I'm a great person and, you know, anything's possible. Yeah. Wow. And I feel like a lot of what you've taught me is it really has a lot to do with your relationship with yourself too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a whole, it's like 400 (laughs) hours of conversation, but Yeah. yeah, it's totally possible. And 
I think the reason it seems difficult for people is because we have a lot of projection stories around it. We have a lot of I'm not good enough stories. Um, And we all do. We all have that. Love is a very unique and special thing that is its own little subject, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. A whole other perspective on love and relationships to round out the Mm -hmm. month. Yeah. February is short. So this is like the bonus. The bonus. (laughs) Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's like, just so I can say this again, when you want love, be love, be loving in your mind, it, be loving towards yourself. So like, let me give some affirmations to people here real quick. Um, yes, please. So affirmations that work are like, I am loving, I am lovable, I am loved. And then it's like, I love this person. I love this relationship. I love being in relationships. Oh my God. I love feeling secure in relationships. I love holding so-and-so's hand. It's like, you want to focus on the experiences you want in the relationship. You don't want to focus on, oh, I love getting a relationship. I love chasing that guy down the street. Like you don't want to focus on the getting of the relationship, which is what most people are doing. It's focusing on the experiences that you would have if you had them, you would be like, Oh my God, I love this. Oh, I love this. Like, just <laughs> think that now. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Anything else with that? No, I'm just, I'm like, I'm a sponge right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. a sponge and then there's a light bulb and then I'm a sponge again. I feel like that's how <laughs> this kind of thing goes. Yes. Okay. So Amy, we wanted to ask too, do you have any resources that you would recommend for those of us who are interested in diving deeper into manifesting and how can our listeners find you online? So yeah, you can find me at my website or my YouTube. So my website is amywestmoreland.com. My YouTube is illuminating joy. Um, I have a lot of videos on different things. I have a list on videos for beginners is actually on my website. You have to go to it to click it, to get to it back on my YouTube. Cause I decided to make it super difficult to find it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it has uh, videos of mine and some other coaches that I think are really good for people who are interested in getting into this, like how to manifest a gift card and rainbows and a specific person is in there. I have learned from so many different resources over the years for people who are into the Christian faith you know, uh, Terry Savelle Foy has a YouTube channel that's fantastic. She's a Christian minister who talks about the law of attraction. Mm. She's adorable. Uh, people who are more into the woo-woo stuff, um, Bashar <laughs> is amazing. He teaches parallel realities. He's like a channeler. It's Bashar, B-A-S-H-A-R. And then um, that's, that's where I learned a lot of my parallel reality stuff that absolutely changed my life for the better. If you're into kind of a more relaxed spiritual sense, um, but interested in like your consciousness being pushed out, there's Neville Goddard, there's Neil Donald Walsh. She has the conversations with God books. And there's so many like great resources, but pick something that sort of resonates with you. It's going to be easier if it resonates with you rather than trying to force yourself. If you're like really into religion to force yourself down the scientific path, or if you're scientific to force yourself down the religious path, it's work with the belief system you have. Because again, the mechanism is above the belief system. It, it works no matter what. And then you get to sort of make it your own in a sense. That's that. really, really helpful. I love that. Thank you. And oh, what is your Instagram for people who want to go check out your manifested rainbows? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, same name over there. It's illuminating okay. joy, all one word. And I actually have my viewers who manifest rainbows use the hashtag manifested rainbow. So you can uh, look that up on Instagram oh, as well perfect. and see uh, rainbows from all over the world. That, that is so, so cool. You can just follow that hashtag then. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. it. That's like, that was such a magical idea. I feel blessed that I was able to bring that into uh, existence, into reality. Yeah. It's so. amazing. Okay. Well, to round out every interview that we do, we have some questions that we ask every single one of our guests that kind of align with our pillars of rediscover. So the first is what does living authentically mean to you? Being yourself. Just be you. Yeah. Just, just be yourself and trust that that's enough. You were made that way. And that's why you were made that way for a reason. I love that. That was the most straight and to the point yeah. answer we've ever gotten. And yeah. I think that sums it right up. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's simple and perfect. Yeah. Because it is simple. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question. If you could travel to one place anywhere in the world right now, where would it be and why? 
I've always wanted to see the Great Pyramid. So Ooh, Ooh. that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah, I would go to the pyramid. That's awesome. <laughs> Amy is a big traveler, just like me. So we have that in common. Yes. If if there is an airplane, I'm like, might I get on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is one thing you would be doing every single day if your life were free of all limitations? Taking a walk. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, there's something magical about taking a walk. I don't know what it is, but it's like a walking meditation. I listen to music. I love walking. I would take a walk every day, no matter the weather. Yeah. I, I don't know. Something like, like getting outside. Yeah. Like grounding yourself. It's I don't know. There, there's cool. something magical about taking a walk. It doesn't yeah. seem like it's that big of a deal, but then you get out into it and you're like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Why did I do this earlier? Yeah. yeah. It's very rejuvenating. It yes. Is. <laughs> Okay, and we have one last question. So we often talk about the difference between being childlike and childish, especially with our Disney connection. There's a lot of childlike qualities that we think really would benefit um, people if they implemented them more into their daily lives because children are just so magical. Yes. Um, yeah. So what is one children are rainbows? They they really are. <laughs> so what is one childlike quality that you think would be beneficial if adults utilized it in their daily lives? Being more playful, I think. Yeah. You know, when we're kids, we have this desire to play. Like, for instance, last night, I sat down finally after I don't know how many years of wanting to do it because I finally got one for my birthday recently. I um, sat down and figured out how to solve a Rubik's Cube. I just, you know, I just wanted to play. I just wanted to, like, do something that didn't lead to anything else just for the sake of doing it. Yeah. Be more playful. I think that's, like, the cornerstone of the concept of play that we forget as adults because we're so task-oriented and then task has an objective. I feel like when you said that, I was like... Oh, the thought of just doing something just because. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I mean. But it's just doing something just because you want to do it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take that on in 2021. Yeah, <laughs> being more playful. I love that. Well, that <laughs> wraps up all of our questions. Yeah. Amy, thank you. That was incredible insight as always. And we're, You're so welcome. Glad you, we're so glad you got to join us. We're really honored to have you on the show. I feel like my mind has been like opened and elevated and a little bit blown. And (laughs) I'm so, I'm so excited about this. I really, really am. And this came like on a, I had like a pretty tough morning today and I was kind of like confiding in Jess about it all when I got here today. And she was like, Oh, I can't wait for us to talk to Amy. It's going to make me feel so much better later. And it really has like just taken the sense of kind of hopelessness and doubt I had from this morning and, and brought, some light into it so thank you for your time oh you're very welcome and, and by the way have you manifested a rainbow yet i haven't yet so i'm going to <laughs> yeah i'm going to you now just as yes i have yeah. now that i know how to do it i'm gonna do it and i yeah. will absolutely take a picture of it perfect it's not just something that blows your mind it's something that you like see it and you're like wow right like isn't yeah. it amazing yeah mm-hmm. i'm like oh Wow. I, f- I just feel connected and yeah. excited. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for kicking off our spring cleaning series for us. And You're very welcome. Bringing just a lot of light and that we have all the tools within us to make our lives beautiful. And that's so freeing. So thank you so much. I truly am so grateful. Yeah. Oh, and can I say one thing about the spring cleaning? Of course. Please. If you're going to clean anything out um, of your mind, clean out all the conclusions that you've come to that say you can't have what you want because of this, this, or that. Like clean those out and throw them away. Yes. I, I love, love that. It. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes. Final welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. We're just cleaning out all the negativity. Thank you so much, Amy. That was a great episode. Stay tuned next week as we continue our spring cleaning series. This week, we cleaned out our thoughts. Next week, we'll see where it leads us. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening and have a great rest of your week. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Rediscover. Please subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening. Your reviews are what keep us going and we'd love to hear from you. Join us every Tuesday for a new conversation and let us know what you think we should talk about next. Follow us on Instagram at positively.kristen and at jessicafay508. And check out Jess's blog at theroadjesstraveled with one L.com. Until next time, stay frumpy.